Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Alex, I'm a Google developer expert for Firebase and I'm gonna show you in this video how to read data from room using Kotlin Flow in Jetpack Compose. This is a video for an article that I wrote, link is in the description below, which was recently published on the Firebase Tips and Tricks publication on Medium. So let's begin. As you already may know, not all databases like the modern cloud Firestore, all the real-time database have included a caching feature. So there are cases in which we have to implement our own caching mechanism. In Android, we can save the data in a local database using Room which is a part of Android Jetpack libraries. So why do we need to persist data locally? It's because we want to let the users continue to use our application even if the device they are using doesn't have an internet connection. However, even if the user is connected to the network, we can save a lot of bandwidth and keep the network traffic to a minimum. Most of the time the user don't want to waste time looking at some loading screens, a case in which we can display previous data instantly while fetching new data in the background. So when doing that, we can greatly improve the user experience. How to implement a local room database in an Android application? So I'll try to show you in this video a complete guide on how to perform CRUD, which stands for Create, Read, Update and Delete operation in the room database with the full code example. So let's take a look at our application. As you already see, I have added a few programming books, but I can add a new one. Let's call it Firebase book and let's write the name of the author, which is me. So we can click on add. And as you can see, we have a new edit book. We can click on the item and we are navigating to a new screen. Here we can change the name, let's say and let's update the record. See, the name is updated and if we want, we can simply delete the book. Before starting, make sure you have added the following dependencies in the build Gradle files. Here is the build Gradle project file and this is the build Gradle module file. As you can see, we are using Hilt for Android for dependency injection, Jetpack Compose and View Model for having a clean architecture app where the room calls for getting the data will be performed using Kotlin coroutine and asynchronous flow. Since we are creating a very simple application, application, we only using two screens, a screen where we'll display some programming books and another one in which we can update the details of a book. To be able to access the room database, first we have to create an entity class, in this case the book class and another class called bookdb which should extend room database. In this class, we have set the entities, which in our project will be book objects. When we set export schema to false, it means that we tell Room not to export the database schema into a folder. Inside this class, we create an abstract bookDAO method that returns an object of type bookDAO. As you can see, this class is responsible for all CRUD operation we want to perform. Please note that our insert, update and delete methods are returning Kotlin unit. However, it can also return a long, a long array or a list. The integer is representing the number of inserted, update and deleted rows that are returned. Each operation from above should be also added to an interface. In our example, the interface is called book repository and exists inside the domain layer. On the other hand, the corresponding implementation will be added into a class called book repository implementation that exists inside the data layer. So to be able to call the corresponding methods from within the DAO, which stands for data access object class, we have to define a book DAO object inside the primary construct. Now all we have to do is to create the composable function right inside the presentation layer. This function will be responsible for displaying the data and implementing the logic regarding the other operation, add, delete and update. Let's start with the book screen. When we click on the floating action button, we open a dialog in which we can add a book title and the author. Once we add a book, we can delete it or edit its details. So if we click on a card, we are redirected to the update book screen. 
A really important thing to mention here is that the official documentation regarding passing data between destinations says Passing complex data structures over arguments is considered an anti-pattern. Each destination should be responsible for loading UI data based on the minimum necessary information such as an item ID. This simplifies process recreation and avoids potential data inconsistencies. So instead of passing the entire book object, we'll only pass the book ID. It's true we can make a hack here and pass the object as a string by converting it using the JSON library, but isn't also recommended. Talking about the content, the screen is almost the same as in the dialog. But the difference is that we have to create another room call to get the corresponding book. Once we hit update, we pop back the stack and go back to the book screen. All these operations we perform are done using a view model. To be able to call the methods inside the repository class, we inject an instance of the book repository right inside the constructor. We do that so we keep our app very simple. Here is what our app module class looks like. So that's pretty much all of it. Remember, in the room database, we can cache almost anything we want. So let's take advantage of this persistent library. In conclusion, that's the simplest solution for performing CRUD operation in the room database using a clean architecture with Jetpack Compose. I hope you find this article useful. And if you have any questions regarding this topic, feel free and leave a comment in the section below. So in the end, guys, you can check the entire article article on Medium. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. But if you think you learned something new, please subscribe to my channel because as you already know, more videos are coming. Bye!